dear students welcome to a new session of tele teaching students today i am not going to announce the topic i am going to teach before teaching you anything i will tell you something very interesting i will take you back to your childhood days you just think of the childhood days you just think of those few books you used to carry in your school bag in all these books what did you find in all those books if i correctly remember there were pictures plenty of pictures now learning through picture was such a delight for the students pictures are glowing with colors pictures are so imaginative pictures are so expressive pictures are so explicit that is why the emphasis has always been on learning through pictures or learning through illustrations so you just remember your pre primary days or your primary school days when even the mathematics teacher was teaching you with the help of pictures the language teacher was teaching you with the help of pictures even the sst teacher the teacher who was teaching you social studies he was also teaching you with the help of pictures there were pictures galore okay so now it's more like uh, call this picture here picture there picture picture everywhere before teaching you anything let me uh, just tell you a very interesting story a certain grandfather who is very close to me one day he was teaching his grandson so he asked him to get the a copy of the primary lessons okay a book meant for the nursery students and he started asking him what does a stand for and do you know what was the answer of the boy the boy said a stands for something that i love to eat and you get from the market for me every day then what does b stand for the boy said again b stands for something that i use to play cricket then the grandfather said he was confused what does c stand for he said c stands for that little creature in our garage okay and what does d stand for d stands for according to the boy the animal that barks throughout the night now you just think of actually the boy should have told a for apple b for bat c for cat d for duck instead of saying that perhaps the boy was more imaginative so he started describing each and every object in his own way so that is the impact of picture on us that is why nowadays even in higher classes even for the undergrads teaching through pictures has become almost so important so dear students why i have told you so many things about pictures because today i will be telling you or i will be teaching you interpretation of graphs charts and diagrams now you just remember a cricket match when a particular channel is telecasting a cricket match live a batsman suppose has scored a century now how many runs he has scored on the on side how many runs he has scored on the off side how many runs he has collected through straight shots how many runs he has collected through lofted shots now if he goes on describing those things it will take at least 30 minutes and you know cricket runs very fast on the field so what does the commentator prefer to do he shows it through a diagram he shows the wagon wheel the wagon wheel of virat kohli the wagon wheel through which virat kohli has collected all his runs so just by looking at the wagon wheel you can very easily imagine how many boundaries virat kohli has scored how many sixes he has scored how many couples he has scored okay so all these things can be very easily guessed through the help of diagram so then what is a diagram the question is how do we define a diagram basically dear students a diagram is a graphic or a pictures representation of facts when we represent facts through a graph or through a picture that means by drawing lines or by drawing a picture when we start representing facts then it becomes a diagram nowadays why teaching through diagrams have become so sorry has become so important i have told you i have given you the example of things 
going on on a cricket field and how all the vital information are graphically presented through the help of graphs or through the help of diagrams. I will give you one more example. If at all you watch the prime time show, almost on any new channel, if at all you watch it, you should watch it regularly because we learn a lot from these new channels, then you can very easily guess how important informations are piled up on the television screen with the help of diagrams or with the help of graphs. Suppose the pollution index, what was the ratio of carbon dioxide on the atmosphere? What was the ratio of carbon monoxide on the atmosphere? What was the ratio of respirable suspended particulates on the atmosphere? You can so see all these things with the help of a diagram, yes, on the television screen. Sometimes suppose they are showing the weather, where it is going to rain today, where it is going to, yes, uh, uh, snow today, okay, where it is going to be a sunny weather today. So, all these things are very effectively and very efficiently shown with the help of a diagram. So, that is why diagrams are so important nowadays to aid the students in learning something. Now, the thing is in class 11, you people have been taught how to draw a diagram and in class 12, you will be taught how to interpret a diagram. So, what you are taught in your class 11, you will just be taught the reverse of those things. So, now I will begin the process today by showing you a diagram here. You just see this is this diagram is called a tree diagram. So, what I have written here, I have written here family of reptiles. Then I have made a binary division. On one side I have written dinosaurs, on other side I have written snakes, then I have written lizards, then I have written garden monitors. Again dinosaurs I have made a binary division, herbivorous, carnivorous. Now here there is an arrow mark. Remember this arrow mark is very important. With the help of this arrow mark, I have just given an illustration of a kind of carnivorous which is called Tyrannosaurus. I hope you people have seen Jurassic Park and you have seen terrible dinosaurs crawling all around, all, all around the park. Okay? So now with this tree diagram, I have tried to explain something about the dinosaurs. Now if at all I try to construct a paragraph with the help of this diagram, then I will say that 2000 million years ago, the earth was inhabited by a terrible lizard like monster called dinosaurs. Dinosaurs belong to the family of reptiles. The snakes, the lizards and the garden monitors that we see, they also belong to the same family. Dinosaurs are basically of two types. Some dinosaurs, they feed on plants, those dinosaurs are herbivorous and some dinosaurs, they kill their own clan and they eat them up. They are called carnivorous. The Tyrannosaurus or T-Rex, which you people must have seen on the silver screen of Jurassic Park belongs to this carnivorous category. So now, with the help of this diagram, I have written a beautiful paragraph. So now, I am showing you when and how we draw a diagram and what type of diagram. So now, uh, let me give an explanation of the diagrams first. Diagrams and charts presents information visually. That is very easy for you to understand. You can see things visually, that means you can see things through pictures. Okay? There are no texts, but predominantly an idea is conveyed to you through pictures. The idea is a picture is worth a thousand words applies when it comes to diagrams and char charts. Now the thing is, we have got a belief that what we can show through picture, we will almost use thousands of words to describe the same thing. You just think, you just think of that elusive smile on the face of Mona Lisa, that famous portrait of Mona Lisa. But almost books have been written on the smile of Mona Lisa. So, that is why many things can be told, many things can be written just with the help of a picture. Then diagrams, through diagrams, it is easier to learn through visuals. They offer greater clarity of understanding, which I have already told you. And the most important thing is diagrams are concrete and concise. Diagrams are concrete and concise. What do you mean by this concrete and concise? Actually, suppose if I say the boy is honest, can I show honesty with the help of a picture? 
but if I say give me a liter of milk, I can show you a milk bottle. So, honesty is abstract whereas, the milk bottle is concrete. So, diagram because diagrams show you through pictures that is why diagrams are very concrete and concise. I have already explained that th thing to you. What cannot be told through thousand words can be shown with the help of a diagram. One can present huge amount of data with help of one diagram. So, with the help of one diagram, one can present huge amount of data and diagrams also encourage creativity and logic. When you are drawing diagrams, you can be very creative and at the same time, you can be logical. Okay? Without logic, it is not possible to draw diagram. Okay, because diagrams are drawn only through inferences. Okay, you build up inferences in your own mind, and on the basis of those inferences, you draw a diagram. So that is why diagrams uh, encourage creativity and logic, and finally, diagrams sharpen your comprehension. Now, sharpen your comprehension. When you are learning through a diagram, when you see things on the screen, when you see a picture on the book it becomes easy for you to understand that picture. It becomes easy for you to have a kind of idea to build up your own conception. Okay? So, when those things are shown to you, the same things are shown to you with the help of texts, then it becomes difficult for somebody because sometimes you will be struggling with the meaning of the word, sometimes you will be struggling to decipher the structure of a very complex sentence. So, that is why those things can be done almost with the wave of a magical wand with the help of a diagram. Now, let me go to the next slide. So, how many types of diagrams are there? These are the types of diagrams. Firstly, we have table diagrams. Then, we have tree diagrams. I have shown you an example of a tree diagram here on the whiteboard. Then, we have graphs. Then, we have bar diagrams and pie charts and finally, flow charts. Dear students, let me tell you, I am not going to deal with flow charts here, because flow charts are not meant for you. Okay, that is not uh, in your syllabus. So, now, let me define all these types of diagrams. A table consists of rows and columns. The rows intersect columns and create boxes. If at all you use Excel, then you must have seen those rows and columns, okay? rows and multiple rows and columns. And when the rows and columns they intersect one another, they create tiny boxes and each box is called a cell in Excel. Then, with the help of a table, classification of or grouping of information is done column wise or row wise. I will give you the example of your timetable. You just think of the timetable. The school has given you. In the timetable, say you will get six divisions, six rows, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Then, you will have a fixed time, okay? 7 o'clock, 7.45, 8.30, 9.15, 10, 10.45, 11.30, 12.15, 1 o'clock. So, that means, say on Monday, if at all you are looking for a particular physics class, on Monday, at what time do you have physics? Then, if you just go through the diagram, you can find that at 8 o'clock on Monday, you have got a physics class. So, it is very easy to locate a particular thing on a diagram. Then, as I have told you, a tree diagram represents binary division of data. Binary division means, data are divided, okay? divided into two parts, binary division of data. Then, graph and bar diagram, they show a trend with rise and fall. Suppose, the price of onion on Monday was 20 rupees per kg, then the price of onion on Tuesday became 25 the price of onion on Wednesday became 30. So, you will find a steady rise and fall. So, you can see that rise and fall with the help of a graph. So, graph and bar, di bar diagrams show a trend okay, with rise and fall. And finally, we will come to the pie chart. Pie chart is a type of chart in which a circle is divided into sectors and each sector represents a proportion of the whole. That means, a circle, if you go to the center, you will find a 360 degree. So, accordingly, on the basis of percentage, we make division. Okay? 50 percent of a circle means 180 degree. Then, 25 percent of a circle is how much? You can say 45 degree. So, accordingly, we make a division. So, now, I am showing you different kinds of diagrams. On the top, 
left hand side I have shown you a line graph then on the right hand side I have uh, yes there is a table on the top right hand side there is a table again just below the graph there is a bar diagram and on the right hand side below the table there is a graph. So, now this is how we draw diagrams ok by drawing diagrams we show facts and informations and with those with the help of those facts and information learning becomes complete learning becomes com uh, concrete and learning becomes comprehensive. Now, let us try to understand when do we draw a table. Previously, I have told you we draw a table when there is a need for classification or grouping of data. I have given you a very nice example something that you come across in your day to day life that is your own school timetable. So, when there is a need to classify data under different heads, remember this particular word is very important for all of you when you start classifying data or keeping data or piling of data under different heads, what do you create? You create rows and columns. Rows are basically vertical lines, two vertical lines they constitute one row and two horizontal lines they constitute one column. Then a table is normally used to show classification of facts and information. I will just give you one example. Suppose, think of a daily laborer who goes out to work 7 days a week, say from Monday till Sunday. Now, he earns a specific amount of money as his remuneration. Suppose, a particular daily laborer earns rupees 200 as his remuneration. From that 200, he spends rupees 120 on buying groceries and other essentials and the remaining 80 rupees he spends on sorry he saves for himself or for the tomorrow or for his children. So, on Tuesday also he earns something and then spends something and then saves something. Then on Wednesday also he earns something, he spends something and he saves something. On Thursday he earns something, spends something, saves something. So, this process goes on till say Sunday. So, now if you get a paragraph like this and you are asked to draw a diagram, in that case you will ask yourself. Now, since the information can be classified under three broad categories like income, expenditure and savings. So, in this case we should draw a table. So, what you have to do? You have to draw a table, but remember while you are drawing a diagram always or never forget to give a title. So, you just suggest a title or you just write a title, the income, expenditure and savings of a daily laborer. Now, you create rows and columns, one column for the days of the week, one column for say, sorry income of the uh, daily laborer, one column for the savings of the daily laborer and one column for the expenditure of the daily laborer. And accordingly on those boxes you just put facts 200 rupees, 120 rupees and 80 rupees income expenditure savings. So, you go on piling of facts column wise and row wise then you will get a complete table. Now, let me come to the second diagram that is when do we draw a graph? We draw a graph when we see a rising or a falling trend. Suppose, a group of migrant workers came back to their own state after being infected by a particular virus and they started infecting people. So, in the month of say January the number of infections were say 20, in the month of February the month of infections uh, sorry the number of infections became 40, in the month of March the number of infections became 60, in the number of April due to vaccination the number of inf 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 infections came down to 30. So, now in this case you can draw a graph. On the horizontal axis, you can mention the months on the vertical axis number of infections. So, you can just make division on the vertical axis like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, uh, sorry 90, 100 like that. 
So, by just joining those dots, what happened in the month of January, what happened in the month of February, what happened in the month of March. So, you will find on almost you can say on the surface you will find those dots you have created. So, by joining those dots you can get a diagram that shows a rising and a falling trend. Okay. So, you can write that the cases of virus infection in Bihar. So, now this is how we draw graphs. Then let me come to the next diagram that is how to draw a bar diagram. Normally, bar diagram sometimes wherever we draw graphs in those, those places also we can draw bar diagrams, but bar diagrams can be very conveniently drawn when you are showing a comparison between say two or more things. Suppose the price of onion was rupees 20 on Monday and the price of potato was rupees 10 on Monday. So, the price of onion came down to rupees 18 on Tuesday, but the price of potato went up to rupees 12 on Tuesday. Again, due to a bus strike, there was a huge rise in the price of onion and potatoes. Okay. Onions became very expensive 30 rupees per kg and potatoes also became very expensive say 26 rupees per kg. So, you can create a one graph for the onion and you can create one graph for the potatoes. So, sorry one bar for the onion and one bar for the potatoes. By showing those bars, you can draw a bar diagram. So, remember we draw a bar diagram when we feel a need to make a comparison between more than two items, whether there if there are two items then also we can draw a bar diagram. If there are more than two, three, two items say onion, potato and tomato then, then also we can draw a bar diagram, one bar for the onion, one bar for the potato, one bar for the tomato. And when you are drawing multiple bars remember you have to make them colorful or you can use different patterns like one bar should be a plain bar another bar should be heavily dotted, then the third bar should be striped. Okay. So, this is how you can use several patterns or you can use several colors okay, to draw a bar diagram. Then finally, I am coming to the pie chart. When do we draw a pie chart? Remember this pie chart is very interesting. We draw a pie chart when the circle represents 100 percent. I will just give you an example. The example is Suppose, a group of reporters came to the college and they asked you whether the election should be held for the college students or not. Now, some students, the meritorious students, they said yes, election should be held regularly. Sorry, not the meritorious students, the students actually who want to have a political career, uh, I beg your pardon, the students who want to have a political career, they expressed the view that election should be held regularly. And what was the percentage of these students? Say 20 percent. Another 50 percent students who know nothing beyond their studies, they say election is a mere waste of time, election should be banned. Okay. So, those 50 percent students they said election should be banned and there remained another 30 percent. These 30 percent students, Amarote Odiare Kothachi, Emane Holila Paniki Godobudantine. So, that is why these people they never give any view. Okay. And what did these people say? They said we do not know whether the election should be held or not. So, when you are showing the percentage 50 percent, then 20 percent, then the remaining 30 percent. Okay. So, on the basis of the percentage you can draw a circle and make the divisions. So, when you are dividing the data, remember when you are dividing the that data, in that case what do you draw? you draw a pie chart. So, let me tell you once again when do we draw a table? The answer is simple when there is a classification of data in that case we draw a table. When do we draw a graph? When we have to show a rising or falling trend or both rising and falling trend in that case we draw a graph. Then when do we draw a bar diagram? When we have to make comparison between more than one object. Okay. In that case, okay, we draw a bar diagram. Remember, even for a single object, I will show you uh, uh, in later slides, even in with one single object, say the popularity of fountain pens among people. So, fountain pen is a singular object with a 
single object also we can draw a bar diagram okay but normally bar diagram bar diagrams are conveniently used in these cases okay so now dear students you must have understood how important these diagrams are with the help of diagrams you can almost so a lot of data and you can show them very convincingly and with that diagram becomes an asset in learning a lot of things i will teach you how to interpret a diagram that means how to write a logically coherent paragraph with the help of a diagram but before that let me tell you god has given us two distinctly different faculties both of them are located on both the sides of the hemispheres of the brain one faculty is called the creative faculty and the other faculty is called the critical faculty what is this creative faculty sometimes while going on the road at night you have imaginary fears you think that there is a ghost standing under the tree so you start having your own fears so or sometimes you can also think of a story so you create a story about a ghost so that is the function of your creative faculty with the help of creative faculty we write poems we write short stories sometimes also the people who are very creative they can write novels and other books but there is another faculty which is called the critical faculty what is the function of this critical faculty faculty now because of the existence of this critical faculty we ask ourselves why this particular boy is so good and why the other boy is so bad why sun shines only during the day and moon comes at night why things are not what they seem to be so sometimes you can ask yourself a very simple question or sometimes you can ask yourself a very complex question the scientists they normally have both the creative faculty and the critical faculty they create with the help of their critical faculty so now why i have told you all these things now when you are interpreting a diagram you use both these faculties both these faculties come into play when you are interpreting a diagram now to interpret a diagram the first step is to understand the diagram thoroughly and while understanding the diag diagram you should always realize or you should always keep in mind that you shouldn't make any mistake while understanding a diagram every diagram gives a series of messages now it's for you to decipher those messages and it almost builds up your inferential ability in what is this inferential ability this word may sound to be a difficult word for you inferential ability means if we say that ramo is mortal samo is mortal damo is mortal finally we can draw the inference all men are mortal so now so the diagram almost sharpens your power to understand so that is why understanding the diagram is very important so what do we do to understand a diagram when we understand a diagram or when a diagram is laid before us for interpretation these are some of the steps you need to remember don't skip over the diagram when reading that means you cannot casually read a diagram Le read the diagram very intensively look for each and every data in the diagram so observe every unit carefully i have told you a diagram is full of separate units for example you can find in a table several rows and several columns okay so every column is a unit and every row is a unit similarly on a pie chart you will find several divisions so every division so every percentage 20% 30% they are all units okay so that is why when you are trying to interpret a diagram observe every unit carefully these visual aids provide summaries or can illustrate a very complex process because all diagrams are not very easy to understand sometimes with the help of a diagram we try to explain a very complex process i have given you the example of the wagon wheel of a batsman 
that's a very complex diagram it's not a very simple diagram because the wagon wheel contains a whole lot of information about the way in which the batsman has collected runs then finally understanding how to read them is the very efficient way to uh, learn a study material now when the study material especially the students who are doing professional courses such so as the btech students or even the medical students basically the diagrams were meant for the medical students so the students who are doing professional courses they handle very complex diagrams so now those diagrams help them uh, uh, as study material so diagram is a very efficient way to study a uh, very efficient way to learn a study material so now while interpreting a diagram or a graph what are the things you should keep in mind now the first thing the first and the most important thing is pay attention to the caption what is this caption caption means the title i have told you the income expenditure or the savings of a daily laborer suppose we are drawing a table about the income and expenditure or the savings of a daily laborer then that becomes the caption the income expenditure savings of a daily laborer so a diagram becomes absolutely meaningless without a caption you cannot imagine the existence of a man without a head similarly you cannot imagine the interpretation of a diagram without a caption then pay attention to the clues available to you from the illustration you will find certain illustration certain this those pictures okay and in those pictures you will find certain explicit clues and certain implicit clues certain clues are very clear okay you can see them and very easily you can guess them and some clues almost you can say they lie hidden okay you have to find them out okay then build up a description with the help of the illustration now you have to think of a description how to describe the diagram okay how to write a paragraph using the information contained in the diagram okay you will find so many information so how to describe those information under which heads okay how to begin it how to bring it to a middle part and how to conclude it so all these things you should keep in mind okay while describing a diagram so build up a description with the help of illustration do not ignore the directions given on the diagram through arrows numbers letters or any other character so when you are reading a diagram do not ignore those instructions these instructions are very important sometimes suppose uh, a map you are somebody is showing you a map frequently you will find those arrows okay that means arrows means this road leads to this particular side okay these are arrows sometimes these numbers okay 1 2 3 4 these are numbers okay sometimes you can find words or sometimes you can find other characters also there are hosts of complex characters so you can find any other character so whenever you find any character don't ignore these characters okay think of these characters very deeply okay and with the help of these characters and with the help of the information that you find on the diagram you start interpreting your diagram if you can notice any trend in the representation of see if you can notice any trend in the representation of data so this let me discuss trend means suppose when you are interpreting a bar diagram you can see a rising or a falling trend when you are interpreting a table you can find what grouping or classification of data when you are interpreting a pie chart you can find a division of data when can when you are interpreting a tree diagram you can find a binary division of data so that is why what trend does this diagram indicate that is very important so that is something which you have to understand while you are interpreting the diagram then finally this is a very vital question for you can you draw a conclusion about the relationship among the items in the diagram so these are not disparate that means these are not unrelated items these items have a close relationship yes amongst one another suppose in a table almost in a column you find so many information but you will find that these information are intimately linked with one another so now it's for you to decide whether you can find a conclusion or there is a relationship among these items in a diagram then certain points you need to remember 
the first thing is you observe the diagram carefully trace the information trace means you try to find out the information available in the diagram then find out the pattern in which they have been arranged pattern i have discussed so you try to find out that pattern in which they have figured in the diagram so now while interpreting a diagram there are several several points that every student needs to remember the point number 1 is each diagram has a pattern of its own as i have told you i have discussed this point one is classification as we find on a table division as we find on a tree diagram or on a pie chart or di distribution distribution means again on the table the data are distributed or even you find a trend trend means you find a trend on a graph so when you are interpreting a diagram i am coming to the second part this part is very important for you ask yourself a few wh type questions so now what are these wh type questions now the question number 1 is what have i seen on the diagram why it has been like this so there are you can generate a number of wh questions so when a diagram is given before you or a diagram is given to you or when you find a diagram on your question paper then you see the diagram inspect the diagram or scrutinize the diagram very meticulously very minutely then after you think that you have understood the diagram you ask yourself a few wh questions then let me tell you the answer to these questions can help you in understanding the diagram while interpreting a diagram always remember that the sentences are logically connected give you let me give you two examples it was raining yesterday and i got drenched while coming home sentence example number 2 it was raining yesterday my father got a kg of potato from the market now if you just think of these two sentences in the first instance the first two sentences are logically connected because it was raining yesterday and i got drenched in the process of rain now in the second example it was raining yesterday then the second sentence is my father got a kg of potato from the market absolutely first sentence has got no link with the second sentence so remember you must have been taught while writing a paragraph in paragraph writing you have to write logically connected sentences a few logically connected sentences can only make a paragraph otherwise if the sentences are disparate they are not logically connected they are stray sentences then you may get a passage but you will never get a paragraph then this is another important thing i am going to tell you use link words or cohesive devices like but because however moreover therefore and etc so now cohesive devices you have to use cohesive devices like but because however moreover therefore etc now i will again to explain this point i will give you one more example suppose if i write the film stars are models role models for the youngsters das they wear fashionable dress das drive trendy cars i will write the film stars are role models for youngsters because they wear fashionable dress and drive trendy cars then i will write das the life of a film star is not without pain and suffering then i will write however the life of a film star is not without pain and suffering that means all these sentences which i have discussed with the use of these cohesive devices like but then i used however i have made them logically connected sentences so again so these devices impart logical unity to your interpretation to write a paragraph on a diagram always think of those implicit references which you may not find with one cursory glance now i have told you also what is this implicit reference and what is this explicit reference implicit means 
something which is not very apparent, something which is not very clear, but something which is there lying hidden within the diagram. So, you have to find out that implicit reference. I will give you a few examples later on. So, you have to find out the those hidden references. Okay? So, if you just read the paragraph casually with a cursory glance means, if you go through it casually, then you may not be able to find out those implicit references. You can use your creativity to in invent some surplus data which may not be there in the diagram. Again, this is also very important. The amount of data shown on the diagram may not be adequate to write a paragraph. So, for that reason, you have to invent surplus data. That means, here you have to use your own creativity. You have to put in additional relevant things, things which are relevant to the paragraph. You have to think of additional relevant things to, to interpret a diagram. So, now I am showing you the specimens. This is a table showing the temperature recorded in the major cities of Odisha. So, here I have created how many columns? I have created 1, 2, 3, 4 columns. In one, one column has been named name of the cities. One column has been named maximum temperature in degree Celsius. Another column has been named, third column has been named minimum temperature in degree Celsius. And the last column has been named rainfall during the last 24 hours. So, now the name is a head. Each column has got a head. That means, under these heads, we have to put in data. So, now in the first column, name the name of the cities I have written, I have taken the name of five cities here, Bhuvneshwa, Katak, Barampur, Sambalpur and Raurkela. Then, I have shown the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature. For example, Bhuvneshwa, the maximum temperature is 32 degree and the minimum temperature is 27 degree and Bhuvneshwa has not experienced any rainfall. Then, Katak, the maximum temperature 33 degree and the minimum temperature 28 degree and again during the last 24 hours, no rainfall in Katak. Then, Varampur, the maximum temperature is 30 degree and the minimum temperature is 24 degree and there has been 1 millimeter rainfall. Sambalpur, maximum temperature 36 degree, minimum temperature 32 degree and there has been no rainfall in Sambalpur. Raurkela, maximum temperature is 38 degree, minimum temperature is 30 degree and there has been 1 millimeter rainfall. So, now, this is how I have recorded in this particular diagram the maximum temperature, minimum temperature and the rainfall during the last 24 hours. Now, I can ask myself a few WH questions to help me in interpreting the diagram. So, now, if you look for the answers, then we can get at least one sentence for each item. Which of the cities in the table have recorded the maximum temperature? Then the second question is, which of the cities in the table have recorded the minimum temperature? Which cities have received rain during the last 24 hours? Which cities have remained dry during the last 24 hours? So, now these are the WH questions which you can ask yourself while understanding a diagram. And remember, the answers to these WH question will help you in interpreting the diagram. So, now with the help of these WH questions, I have interpreted the diagram here. Just go through this interpretation. The meteorological forecast given on the table shows that Bhuvneshwar has recorded a maximum temperature of 33 degree Celsius and a minimum temperature of 27 degree Celsius, whereas the neighboring city Katak has remained 1 degree warmer. But Varampur, because of its proximity to the sea, has been the coolest of all the cities, recording a maximum temperature of 30 degree and a minimum temperature of 24 degree. Both the hill towns, Sambalpur and Raurkela, have remained relatively hotter, recording a maximum temperature of 36 degree and 38 degree and a minimum temperature of 32 degree and 30 degree respectively. Barampur and Raurkela have received 1 millimeter rainfall during the last 24 hours, while the other 3 cities have largely remained dry. Now, I will discuss, okay, I will discuss this interpretation. Look, I have underlined a few sentences. Suppose, whereas, whereas is a link word. Okay. Just to keep them logically connected, I have used whereas here. Bhubaneswar has recorded a maximum temperature of 33 de degree Celsius and a minimum temperature of 27 degree Celsius, whereas the neighboring city Kotak has remained 1 degree warmer. I could have written 1 degree warmer means 34 degree and 28 degree. No, I did not do that. I simply wrote 1 degree warmer because I have done that 
just to avoid repetition. Then in the next sentence I have written, but Varangpur because of its proximity to the sea, that is nowhere in the diagram. This is something the extra data, okay, I have used using my own creativity, okay, to make the diagram, okay, look logically convincing. Varangpur because of its proximity to the sea has been the coolest of all cities recording a maximum temperature of 30 degree and a minimum temperature of 24 degrees. Then both these hill towns, nowhere in the data it has been written that Sambalpur and Raurkala are hill towns, but since I know these two cities fairly well, that is why I have added okay, this hill town okay, phrase okay, while describing Sambalpur and Raurkela. Then just look at the last sentence. Barampur and Raurkela have received 1 mm rainfall during the last 24 hours, while the other cities have remained dry. Look, this is very important. Instead of writing independent sentences, I have just mixed up. Barampur and Raurkela have received 1 mm because both, those, both these cities have received 1 millimeter of rainfall okay, during the last 24 hours. And instead of writing Kotak, Bhuvneshwar and the other city, the three other cities have remained dry. So, this is how you can make your diagram very concise. So, that is why the arrangement of data depends upon the comprehension, that means the understanding of your diagram. So, now I am showing a bar diagram. A bar diagram, here is no comparison. So, this bar, bar diagram shows the number of buses manufactured by a company. You can have a good look. So, on the horizontal axis, there is a division of months, 8 months, January, February, March, April, May, June, July and August. And on the vertical axis, you will find the number of buses manufactured. So, when creating a diagram or when you are interpreting a diagram, you just remember these are all very important units, months of the year and number of buses manufactured. So, these are the things to be mentioned. Okay. So, now, how I have interpreted with, with the help of WH questions. Question number one is, what does the horizontal axis reflect? Naturally, the horizontal axis reflects the month. What does the vertical axis reflect? Naturally, the answer is the vertical axis reflects the number of buses manufactured. How many buses were manufactured in the month of July and August? I have clubbed them together because July and August, they have exact number, similar number of buses manufactured. How many buses were manufactured in the month of January and February? What could be the reason behind such a meager production during the first two months? Again, this question is an inferential question. This question will help you to just think of something, to use your own creativity to make the diagram logically connect. Then I have interpreted this. The bar diagram above shows the number of production of motor buses by a company. The horizontal axis shows a period covering 8 months from January to August and the vertical axis shows the number of buses manufactured every month. If we study the diagram, we find a regular increasing trend. So, now this is what or this is how I have interpreted the diagram. I have underlined the last phrase here, a regular increasing trend. A regular increasing trend, where do we find a regular increasing trend? In the month of January, 200 buses were manufactured. In the month of February, it became 400. In the month of March, it became 600. In the month of April, it became 800. In the month of May, it became 1000. In the month of June, it became 1200. So, you find a regular increasing trend here. So, that is why I have underlined that word a regular increasing trend. So, now just one more example. This is a pie chart showing how much water do we use. The it was the, an investigative report conducted by the American Water Works Association. Now, what do you find here? You find certain divisions, divisions on the basis of percentage. You find there is a division for the toilet, a percentage for the toilet, a percentage for the shower, a percentage for the faucet that is tap, a percentage for leaks and a percentage for washing of clothes. Now, when we are interpreting this diagram, then we can ask ourselves the following WH questions. How much water does an average American use in the toilet? How much water does an American use while washing clothes? How much water is wasted because of leakage? Do the Americans use water judiciously? Again, this the last one is an inferential question. So, if we just get answers to these questions, then we will be able 
to write a logically coherent paragraph. The pie chart above shows some interesting data about the consumption of water by an average American. The chart shows that the American use maximum amount of water while using toilet that is 26.7 percent. They also they are also very fastidious about cleaning their clothes. They use 21.7 percent water available for their household on this set. However, they are very economical in the use of faucet. Okay, in the use of water while taking bath and using faucet. So, I hope you have understood. This has been a very interesting lesson. Teaching you is a sheer pleasure and pride for me. Thank you all. <laughs>